Would you say with me, I am a center of spiritual living. I am a center of spiritual living. You know, my friends, every person has a personal belief system. All of us have a, a one that's it's, it's unique to us. It is a set of deeply ingrained ideas that color our perception of life and that expresses in the way we express life. And even though we may not be consciously aware of it, we all operate on certain basic assumptions about ourselves, about other people, and about the nature of reality. Many of these ideas, of course, were instilled by parents and caregivers, and we know that some of them stay with us all our life. I can still hear that old and potentially dangerous one my grandmother used to say when you were having a good time. Hmm. Chicken Mary, Hawk Denier, suggesting that it was almost sinful to have a good time. <laughs> Because watch it, if you're enjoying yourself, it means that disaster is right around the corner. What a thing to instill in, 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 in children. I'm glad we have outgrown that these days. But friends, our beliefs make up a kind of inner road map. Now, now we have GPS, so it's, it's a lot easier. Although I have a friend who was using his GPS and it said, turn next left, and next left was through somebody's yard. Um, but <laughs> they, they don't... They don't the GPS doesn't take into account um, settlements and things that grew up in unexpected places in beautiful Jamaica. But maybe we could think of it instead of as a, um, a GPS as we know it, think of it as a God system, a God PS, which, which changes the whole mental state. But in the old days when you had a treasure map or a road map, you know, you had to follow it. And you couldn't find your way beyond the edges of what the map showed you. So that those inner road maps that we have have led us down pathways of despising ourselves and other people, of pathways of opening up in us parts of us that are unlike our true higher selves, that are not worthy of our God self, because it goes all the way back to the, those early, early, deeply ingrained ideas instilled in us by those people who meant well and who loved us or didn't love us. In 1893, Swami Vivekananda delivered an address to the First World Parliament of Religions in Chicago, Illinois, which shocked the fundamentalists of his day by his assertion of humankind's divinity. Vivekananda told the story of a lion who had been raised by a flock of sheep and naturally thought that he was one of them. One day, wandering away from the flock, he encountered a lion who tried to convince him that he was not a sheep at all, but to no avail, until the lion took the sheep lion to a drinking hole and showed him his true reflection. And you are lions, Vivekananda told his audience, quote, you are pure, infinite, and perfect souls, unquote. And here comes the part that shocked them and that was labeled by the press at that time as a terrible blasphemy. Vivekananda said, and I quote, he for whom you have been weeping and praying in churches and temples is your own self. He for whom you have been weeping and praying in churches and temples is your own self. Former US President Barack Obama echoed this belief when he quoted author Alice Walker who titled her best-selling book, We Are the Ones We Have Been Waiting For, colon, in a light, in a time of darkness. My friends, all the time I wonder about the, the amazing vision that, that inspired Dr. Elmer Lumsden to name this place the Temple of Light. You know, sometimes when you say to people, I, I, I'm the Temple of Light, they say, what, Temple of Life? I said that too. But the name is actually Temple of Light. Because there is no more than ever the need for that light to illumine 
human misunderstanding, human darkness. When you look around the world at what is happening, I just say, thank God I worship at a place called the Temple of Light. And I want you to know that too, it is very special that in this country, Jamaica land we love, in beautiful Jamaica, we are privileged and have the right to worship as we please, how we please, and to stand up and be counted as metaphysicians. In other countries in the world, you, you wouldn't be able to do that. So if we really, in Jamaica, give true meaning to the word freedom. We are free to worship as we do. And I, I, I know we talk about the fundamentalists and, and, and what they believe, but we honor everybody's belief. And as I said earlier, everybody has a right to believe what makes them feel comfortable in their skin and in their souls and in the world that they live in. We honor all paths to God, but we choose to do what Jesus said. He never said, worship me. He said, follow me. Follow me. And you know, friends, if you say, go that way, it doesn't mean that you must worship my finger. It means go in the direction that I'm pointing. And that is so important because through the ages, people have turned their attention to the messenger and have quite ignored the message, which was very simple. You know, in the Jewish scriptures, uh, they reflect the consciousness of a people who were looking for them, find, finding themselves. Uh, in many ways, they were an ungovernable rabble of, of people in olden times who were hard to govern. I mean, poor Moses, you know, he must have had a really hard time with them. So they created a God in their image and likeness, and that God was a, a rebel too, jealous and um, whimsical and, you know, showing favor to those that he loved and um, reigning judgment on those that didn't um, worship and adore him. And Jesus said, I give you a new commandment. You don't want to, I think, simpler than this, you know. Love one another. It, it, what is there not to understand about that? Love one another. And then he said, even as I have loved you. Just think about it, my friends, if you can just look in the mirror every morning and say, I am beloved of the presence and power that inhabits eternity. Can we say that? I am beloved of the presence and power that inhabits eternity. I am beloved by the presence and power that in That idea of the, the divinity of man, you know, is, is just central to the teaching. Eric Butterworth, the New Thought um, luminary, writes in his classic work, Discover the Power Within You, and I quote, life is growth and unfoldment, and life is lived from inside out. Life is lived from inside out. And Butterworth says, how few people really know this. The average person lives his life from outside in. He frustrates his potential when he lets his level of consciousness be determined by what people say, what conditions appear to be, what he reads in, you, in the newspapers. He becomes little more than a barometer that registers the conditions of his world. Then he gets caught up in the dilemma of whether to conform to the world around him or to spend his life resisting it. Jesus the Christ and way sure declared, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8, 32. It really doesn't matter what happens around you in the outer world because you have been given the power, the power to overcome the world. Butterworth further notes that there is a belief system rooted in the collective consciousness of the race that you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Nothing, no gossip. Change is inevitable and change is possible for every single human being. And I can tell you when I go to the prison on a Tuesday or Reverend Anne goes to the women's facility, we see change in action. It's not just a passive interaction between people who are incarcerated and people who, who have come to try and, and show them who they are. We can see the change operating in people. Um, Butterworth tells the story of a man who, who 
looked into the pool of God consciousness, as many of the, the participants in our prison program do, and rediscovered his true identity. And you will appreciate how deeply this story touches me, given the fact that of the work we are doing. But I wanted to share with you this man who chose to be known by the name Alva Romanes, had embarked on a career in crime early in his life, and of course his activities on the shady side of the law inevitably led to his incarceration for a long stretch in a penitentiary. And there he began, as I have found prisoners tend to do, to do some deep soul searching. If you're locked up for several hours a day, you know, it's, it's really a time for looking inside and reflecting on what got me here and, and what's my life about. And Romanes, as he looked into the inner pool and the region of his, uh, of his true self, his eternal higher self, he expressed his feelings in poetry. And I want to just read you one that uh, came out of his consciousness. I am not the brood of the dust and sod, nor a shuttled thread in the loom of fate but the child divine of the living God with eternity for my life's estate. I am not the sport of a cosmic night, nor a thing of chance that has grown to man, but a deathless soul on an upward flight and my father's heir in his wondrous plan. As I weigh the suns on the rim of space, who can care to doubt of my destiny? Who can fence my feet within time and place as I search the worlds of infinity? I am man, the son of the Most High. I am man and one with the life divine. I am Lord of earth and of sea and sky. And behold, the powers of heaven are mine. I am man, the chosen, and man the free. And it matters not what I might have been, for I walk erect through eternity to the far off goal that is yet unseen. With unwavering faith in the coming day, I have turned my course from the things of time. And with Jesus, my brother, to point the way, I have found my place in the life sublime. I have found my place in the life sublime. That is like a lotus blooming in the mud of the, of the prison system, an exquisite, beautiful white flower opening petal by petal to the glory of the divine within. And so my friends, I ask you this morning, have you found your place? Your place in the center of what God intends to be the life sublime, the life more abundant. That is what our new members signed up for this morning, to be a center for spiritual living, a purveyor of the life sublime, a part of a thriving ministry which is our stated intention, because as we believe, individually and collectively, even so shall we draw all our others who we encounter into that consciousness that glorifies God. And so let me give you your assignment. I talked about... You know, I said, when we go to the prison. And when I say, when we go to the prison on a Tuesday morning, I don't just mean Reverend Michael, Reverend Anne, Practitioner Carol Charlton, and yours truly. When I say we, I mean we. In Jamaica, we say uno. Because although you may not be going physically, we take with us the consciousness of this teaching, the consciousness generated by those people who come here Sunday after Sunday that attend classes, that come to the various activities, that create the consciousness of this center for spiritual living. That is what goes to teach the classes known as change your thinking, change your life. And so your assignment, your mission, should you decide to undertake it. Is this Tuesday, I want you to say during your prayer time, and I know that everybody within the sound of my voice has some personal quiet time in the mornings, don't leave home without even 10 minutes of just centering yourself in that presence and power which walks with you through eternity. Don't leave home without it. 
And this week, as you are centered in that, in that space, I want you just to say, today, the truth I believe touches the heart of someone that is in prison and awakens them to their spiritual magnificence. Let me give it to you again. Today, the truth I believe touches the heart of someone that is in prison and awakens them to their spiritual magnificence. And people, it's not just the people behind the walls at Tower Street who are in prison. There are many people that we meet and encounter on life's path that are imprisoned by blame, shame, regret, and fear. And I want you to know that the truth that you stand for this morning is a liberating truth. It sets people free. So would you say for me today, the truth I believe touches the heart of someone that is in prison and awakens them to their spiritual magnificence. And save me also, the name and the nature of God is written in my heart and mind. The name and nature of God is written in my heart and mind. I am a center for spiritual living. Say to your neighbor, the name and nature of God is written in your heart and mind. You are a center for spiritual living. The name and nature is written in your heart and mind. You are a center for spiritual living. Namaste. The name and nature of the divine is written in your heart. You are a center for spiritual living. Namaste. My friends, the name and nature of God is written in your heart and mind. You are, we are, all humanity is a center for spiritual living. Namaste.